Pharrell said this. He's like, I, I'm not looking for equity. I'm looking for equality in the game. And so it's like, all right, I'm not going to complain that it's slow. Yo, bro, we're doing this. We're doing this. This is actually the start of the the podcast, and we're it's gonna, called. Who 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 gets the honor? You do it. All right, all right. Introduce it. Introduce it. And it's called in the trenches. Let, let's toast to that. Let's toast to that. All right. Oh, Real I need quick. a drink. I need a drink. Here, here. Ah, there you go. Cheers, brother. <laughs> Cheers. And then we got Vic in the back. Cheers, brother. You can't see him, but Vic is actually helping run this yeah. run this thing. He's running three cameras. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. That's some good scotch. I do love mm-hmm. me some good scotch. Only as of recently. Wow, but, you, you downed that. Yeah, I did. Okay, I'll, I'll join you. I'll join you. Mm. With that said, uh, my name is James Cortez, and with me is... My business partner, director, and as of today, co-host of In the Trenches. Yeah, let's Let's go, baby. And I'm nervous as fuck. Dude, it's okay, me too. And I I do want to preface this by saying that this this right here is going to be a very iterative process where, I mean, if you're you're just looking at these frames right now, they're very, like you see cords everywhere. We kind of just set this up. Vic helped us set this up in like five minutes. Like five minutes ago. So, um, but we kind of decided that we just wanted to talk and share, share the journey, the journey that we've been on the last, last year almost. And I think one thing that would be nice is this is going to be a very, this is the first episode. We can say whatever the fuck we want. No, but <laughs> with that said, this is going to be somewhat of an origin. I think it, it'd be kind of cool to, just give whoever is watching a little backstory on how who David and I are, um, how we start working with each other, and ultimately how we got on the trajectory that we are on now. One thing I think that's always been fascinating to me since I started working with David is he and I have uh, a very similar approach to creativity. One thing that you and I really resonate and relate on is the fact that at one point in time, both David and I were mus- were musicians. We were talent. We were the ones in front of the camera. Uh, and now we're the ones capturing it. And I think because of that, we have unique perspective on being an artist or, you know, the artists that we work with. We know some of the challenges that they go through. And as a production company, we speak the language. We know what artists need. We know how to portray them in the best possible light. At least we hope so. So I think it'd be kind of cool to just give our ESPN highlights on you know where we come from creatively. And David, you could start as the founder of All Films. James, I, I've expressed this to you that music is a big part of my life. You know, this really saved me. So creating all films and, and uh, you know, film finding me, you know, the foundation of it is still music. If you ask my cousins, my best friends, they knew me as the singer-songwriter, you know, and um, I've probably written, you know, 50 plus songs with with different other collaborators. You know, shout out to uh, Off Vibe and Irving and you know, other producers that I've worked with, but those are, you know, the key people in in my music life. Right. What I really love about that part of my life is that I really gave my all to it. And because of that, I don't miss it, you know, but I'm very blessed because Off Films allows me to be still close to it. Ooh, I love that. And for those of you guys don't know, David experienced relative success in the music industry. So for all the artists who we work with, they they may, they might not have that perspective, but you you were there, as yeah. we say in the trenches, but you were performing at the Troubadour 
Um, you sold it out, right? Yeah, we sold out the Troubadour. We sold Troubadour. out House of Blues. And those were and not a knock to what we've done as off films, but I did the big venues. Yeah. So we sold out, you know, 1,000, 1,500. You know, obviously that was a very collective thing. And the, the hustle that I've gained from that music is what I apply to off films. And then I think when I heard, you know, the music that you created, I think the first time we met, me and James actually met through a different contractor. And um, whenever I meet someone, I just try to connect. And I, I was like, hey, let me have your Instagram at that job. And then I kind of deep dive finding, cause you, you just posted a remix of a song. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this was, uh, it was a remix of, uh, Kanye's hurricane, his collab with the weekend. Yeah. And I had, I had done a, it was almost like a, a remix, a live performance remix hybrid. Um, and it, interestingly enough, David and I met shooting a wedding in one of the most unlikeliest of places. And, you shout know, out 214. Yeah, shout out to Vin Crizel for bringing us together. You know, weddings yeah. do bring people together in that way. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's crazy because at that moment, I, I didn't know I'd be meeting one of my, you know, one of my future best friends and greatest creative collaborators. And I think that was initially what connected. It was the music, you know, and we're doing music things now. But um, at least for me, you know, I've... I've also been there as with David, we've, we were both musicians. And for me, I kind of got my start in the electronic music industry on the, during the, the time of the EDM bubble. And I think for myself, there, there's a lot of things. This is piggybacking off of what David said with, you gave it your all. And because of that, you, you know, for me, it's more so I have things that I wish I could have gone back and, and done differently, knowing what I know now about business, about branding, about how to move as an artist. But um, I did experience relative success. I released a song that has 3.5 million plays on Spotify. I have multiple remixes that have done, I want to say over 750,000 plays on YouTube. And then um, I have a song, an Ed Sheeran remix that got number one on Hype Machine. And I think that one currently sits at. I know I'm flexing all these yeah. stats. No, all these no, no, that's hard. Hype machine, because you I, know hype machine. Yeah, from back in the day. I know hype machine. I've submitted so many songs to them, and I never got. And I love that we can relate on yeah. that because you know the stroke of like sending those emails back in. If you were, let's say, in the music scene in 2013, 24, etc., and you wanted to get your music out there, hype machine. They were the gatekeepers, the yep. bloggers there. You would have to get tight with them and then submit your music. And then they were the ones responsible for syndicating your music on these platforms. Submit then, hub. Yeah. On and submit you, hub. Sometimes you, you know, you got to pay a dollar to submit. Yeah. Dude, and sometimes then, it's more. Yeah. Whatever, whatever their fee was. And then you would always be like, drop a heart on hype M. Did and you, did like, you, did you ever pay the dollar? Cause you know, if you paid or you probably did where you pay and then they give you feedback. Yeah, it's just I. <laughs> so so they say no. Yeah, but you pay the dollar so you could find out why they said no. Yeah, and one of them was like, like, write better music. <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding, but it like the mindset of of just wanting to do something not perfectly, but just for the sake of doing it. I think it's something that we've um, a mindset that we've adopted this year, and that has put us on the trajectory of where we're, we're at right now with off films. And so, uh, David, I think, I think you'd be the best one to touch base on this, but, um, let me just, let me just set the stage in 2023. We probably, we had maybe our first big year with off films in, in terms of revenue, in terms of contracts, in terms of what we brought in. And yeah. so fast forward to April of this year, I remember having conversations with David and it was almost like the opposite. We were in a place where work became slow and it was a far cry from last year. And so if you want to touch base on like what, what your mindset, because <laughs> you know, I remember, I remember. Deep. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. Um, reflectively now, I think it was, it was for good reasons. Right? 100%. It forced me personally to reflect and then also really have time for the family. Um, we got to work out like we every got day. Yeah. And we got to get our health 
in check too, which is mm-hmm. a big thing. I mean, you can work as much as you want. You can become a workaholic. And, and this is just advice. I just want to say, take care of yourselves because it's like you can kill yourself working. But at the end of the day, if you don't have your health, like what's all that, what's all the effort for if you can not enjoy life for, you know, take care of your, your health. If you get sick, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. And for me, it was a big like tastemaker for me as a director. Yeah. So on that slow time, I think what was a big turning point was that I voiced to everybody that, hey, I'm just going to grab the camera and go shoot one story. You know, hopefully we get Darius on the pod, but Darius, Darius Jacob, he literally sent me a song a morning of, and I was like, dude, this is dope. And I was like, I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to go shoot, shoot a visual for it. And to this moment, because of how the sun came out and that day, those are still one of my favorite visuals that I captured. Last year, I was very reliant on on using my skills of of using my resources. Yeah. And then this time forced me to kind of like, all right, if I am going to work with other creatives in a higher capacity, I have to get better too. So that that time flowed me to get in a better headspace creatively, be a better tastemaker. And then our connection musically and, and and trying to work together as you as a DP. Right. Which like obviously I enjoyed and this is, has progressed. And so I guess to me to ask you, you know, what were you feeling when I was going through that and then realizing that man, we're we're actually creating something dope together. Yeah. Without no budgets and everything. I think, um, and I remember the text that you sent me, you, it was when, so you, Vic and Darius, uh, they were shooting In the Mood for Love Part 2. And it was a slower uh, start to the year and David expressed those things as he mentioned. I remember the text that you said, you know, I'm just, I don't want to wait and I don't want to like ask for, you know, any help. I'm just, going to shoot. I just want to go out there and shoot something. And that mentality, it's the idea that if no one is going to hand me the opportunity, I'm going to go out there and make it for myself. And that's something that instantly struck a chord with me. And obviously, you know, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to make money off of what we do. I, I want to, I want all of us to get <laughs> filthy fucking what rich. What does Vic say? We gonna get, yeah, there we go. We gonna get We're rich. rich. <laughs> I want to be able to give Vic <laughs> standing right there some shit now. I want to throw that white party. <laughs> it, <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> I want to be that next. <laughs> David wants to throw, he wants to throw the brown party. <laughs> yeah, but none of the white party without the other Diddy stuff. You know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. cool. Well, something that's worth <laughs> celebrating in that capacity. But, um, <laughs> Damn, what was I saying? <laughs> just like lost no. my train of thought. Um, wait, no, really. <laughs> you really, want to be rich. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, I, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So like I was saying, <laughs> um, obviously I want to be able to make money doing what I love. I think that's a dream for anyone. And in this case, when we had a slower time of the year, in my mind, I was like, I don't care if we have to do this pro bono, if we have to do this like free, whatever, for free. Uh, I just want to make as much as we can, make a huge quantity of art together, obviously. Yeah. Because I know in, in the end, whether it is, whether that piece of art becomes a portfolio piece that we can use as leverage down the road, or it's just us continuing to level up our skills, our tastes as both a director and DP respectively, I'm like, there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. Like, I want to just keep going for it and keep stretching ourselves creatively, getting the reps in, getting our 10,000 hours in and and really just going for it. And that, that month, so it was March going, I think April, March, April, that's kind of what kickstarted this trajectory and this trajectory that we're on now, or we're just, we have a lot of momentum as a production company. And, and it did start with a slow time of the year. Sometimes you just need that, you know, fire, light the fire in your ass to, to really go for it. But this, this whole journey is what, what put us on this mission, this mission that David and I have to where we, we made a verbal agreement signed in, 
in blood and tears. <laughs> and by blood and tears, I mean sake bombs. Sake bombs. And sushi. sushi. And yeah. sushi. I remember that day, Lionel Messi scored for Argentina from a corner kick. Or he, he I think he got the assist. Oh yeah, Argentina yeah. won. They were, they were yeah. performing. So this was during Euro 20. Wait, was it Euro? No, sorry. I, I think it was the World Cup. It was it was the World Cup or World Cup yeah. or something. No, it was Euros. But, but it was the game. It was the the day. It was the game before. Yeah. The big oh, game. sorry. It was the Copa America. That was the game. I'm I'm a moron. I should know this stuff. But um, we decided to get sushi, and at that point, we had built a cadence of working with each other as a DP director combo, and we decided, or actually, I should say, David first decided that he was going to flip into this mindset where it's like, I'm going to, one, really hone in on All Films' branding. And, uh, sorry, once I, I just had a brain fart. We can actually cut this. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll add to because yeah, yeah. You- it, was, it was, you wanted to hone in on like, not just like the, the branding, but also like what the, what we're, what we're communicating to others of what we do. Yeah, mu- music again was like the back burner. I, I the reason why you know one of the reasons why I asked you or even discussed like, hey, is this something that you want to go in with me? Was because I know that to make a lot of money, which we want to do in in making music videos is going to be really, really hard, right? And so in order for us to even be in that, like we have to go through, you know, 50 plus music videos together to kind of, to gauge that. 100%. So when I when I went to you with the idea, it was because I wanted to preface like, hey, this may not make money for either of us, but it's like, but I want to do it. Do you want to do it? Is this creatively something that we could try to try to make it and this is a big Undertale. wall yeah, yeah there's like to be in this space there's only like 20 f- music directors that do the big you know budgets that we want to do yeah. hollywood is is a small circle you know they and the biggest directors they're the ones that get the jobs you yeah know, it's 80 the Pareto principle 80 20 20 percent of the of the directors get 80 percent of the work yeah so we're trying to like even our cold emails are like messaging these agencies and saying like hey I I'm not asking for you to represent us. I'm not asking you to represent me. I'm saying well there's a music video that you can't give to X Y and Z because it's a $10,000 music video. I'm just like alley oop it over alley to us and take 10%. Just, yeah, give it to us. Yeah, yeah. We'd be down to shoot that. Yeah, we'll 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 work with that 10 grand, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. We'll work that, with that 50 grand. I mean, that's not a whole lot, yeah, but, yeah, but we'll yeah. work with the 50 grand. Well, yeah, that's it's, all good. It's like, because I because I know they're getting those jobs, but it's probably not, It's they're not going to give it to Dave Myers, right? Right, they're right. They're not going to give it to them because they're not in that skill. But I'm like, dude, take those on and pass it off to people like us. Give us an opportunity. Pharrell said this. He's like, I, I'm not looking for equity. I'm looking for equality in the game. And so it's like, all right, I'm not going to complain that it's slow. I'm just going to go after it now. And I think it was just finding partners that were down to kind of go for it. While we still do the corporate stuff, while we still do, you know, make the money, but there's an inside thing that you at least knew where my heart was and that if I make my decisions based off of that, then you'll know. And yeah. that's like, you know, how that partnership happened. Yeah, and then we we got sake bombs, and now we're in the middle of trying to accomplish fifty two music videos, <laughs> yeah. which is a lot. It's a lot. No, it's, it's that's roughly that roughly equates to one music video a week per year. And if you knew the amount of effort and and just everything that we go through in the trenches to create a music video, that is a lot. You know, I think even getting half of that in a calendar year would be a lot, um, but. One thing that you remind me of is is that question. It's like, if this doesn't make money, would you want to do that? And mm-hmm. I think you know the there you go. Yeah, yeah that's, the that's the answer I think for both of us is wholeheartedly yes. And I'm looking at the camera, making eye contact with you as I'm saying this <laughs> because this piggybacks just backtracking to how we started this. David and I were both there. We were musicians at one point who both 
found ourselves transitioning into video work, you know? So at least for me, and maybe I speak for both of us, doing music videos is the perfect combinations of those, those two cornerstones in our lives, music and then video production work. And so when I think about it, and you mentioned this earlier too, we'll still do corporate work to pay the bills. We still do whatever other medium. We shot a short film a couple of weeks ago directed by Vic over there, who's sitting over there. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, if I could pick one medium, one style of video production that I could just do for the rest of my life, you know, it would 100% be music videos. And David, I, I feel like you, you'd feel the same. Yeah. And I think that's what this podcast is, is to go, is reflecting off of our growth that we kind of, that we've committed to. So hopefully, you know, this is just the first one, but we'll go through our first music videos together. Even maybe ones that, you know, yeah, we start with the music videos that we did together as we progress and we could reflect on those, invite the, the artists, the, artists, the crew through. that was yeah. involved in it. Our thing is really not to be like, hey, check out this. Well, yeah, it is. Check out the music video. Yeah. But also- but you should. Yeah. <laughs> you should totally watch it. You should. <laughs> but also to, yeah, really reflect and, and to bring more eyes on the stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Right? yeah we're also trying to, I think in, in some cases, peel back the curtain and, and give you guys uh, a real look at how our, pres- our process works when, when it comes to creating music videos. I think they're- David and I, as well as everyone off films, we're pretty active on social media. So odds are if you follow us on social media, I know if you follow me, I'm very proactive when it comes to putting behind the scenes, like uh, giving you guys an inside look on how it's made. But I think even then there's a little romance, it's a little romanticized idea that we're creating when in reality, there's a lot of hard work. Sometimes there's no guarantee that we'll be able to lock down an artist to shoot on a given day. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that that we might not necessarily share on social media. So I think this podcast will give one the community, but also hopefully aspiring filmmakers, people in the music video space, a chance to see what what it really is like in the trenches. I'm really gassing that that title. <laughs> yeah. We just, when we decide what, last yeah, night. The, last night. And and we wanna we want we chat GBT. <laughs> I, I, I wanna just say it too, like I I you know, I, I think you would agree with me to say that we want to be cheered on. I think this is like the idea of reflecting and showcasing and seeing the growth and finding our community that we could build within this get not just inspired by us, but Rudis cheers on. Yeah. And Please cheers on. We yeah. need all the validation we can get. Yeah, all the validation. <laughs> Give it to us, babe. And, and all the hate. <laughs> and all the hate. <laughs> but, uh, but I think, yeah, that's like the, the, the main thing. And, and also to show the love to not, not just the talent, but the team. The, the, our crew. We are very fortunate to work with very talented people who are not only, you know, incredible at what they do in their specific roles. But I feel like we're lucky to work with people who share a similar, similar mindset, creative morals as we do creative morals. I don't know if that's the the right terminology for it, but the right mindset and approach that we do when it, when it comes to, because we've done a bunch of pro bono shoots, a bunch of free music videos, and it's incredibly humbling and encouraging when we have, homies that will pull up and be like, hey, I want to be a part of it. Let's, let's do it. And they'll donate their time as we are. And I think because of that, we've been able to create some incredible pieces of art or uh, music videos this year. So, Yeah, so subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> this is the end of the video? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is she- well, well, I would say this, right? That, that, on top of this podcast with the Off Films channel, check out the music videos that we are able to produce and post on our own our vlog stuff, but this is another iteration of what we're trying to add to it. So yes. Bring it really personal. Yeah. You guys are going to get to know us really well. Um, also, make sure to follow us on social media. Uh, I am David Aury and Jay Kraken. And then of course, at All Films, we're very active on Instagram. So if you guys want to see behind the scenes on music video shoots, etc., cetera, uh, be sure to check us out. But until then, I think that we're signing off on the first episode of In the 
Wait, and the trenches. Yeah, yeah, in the trenches, it. baby. Um, and, and I want to thank you guys for joining us. This was a little bit of a, a more self-indulgent. We are talking about ourselves a lot, but it's two glasses in. Yeah, two glasses in. It's only going to get crazier. Cheers, brother. Cheers, guys. Woo. All right. Yeah, let's go in the trenches, baby. Ooh, baby, I just took a huge whiff of the scotch. And it's strong. <laughs> Cut. All right. Oh, that was episode one.